we'll do a few more examples here. So here we have a square root of 6 and a square root of 18, but let's break those down first. Square root of 6 is 2 times 3. If we look at 18, we can divide that by 2, which gives us 9, and we can divide 9 by 3, which gives us 3. So this is times 2 times 3 times 3. Now we can, because they're both underneath, every one of those numbers is underneath a square root, we can put them all together underneath the square root. It's all multiplication. So I can put the two twos in here and the three threes in here. Now remember, this is understood to be a 2 here, so we're looking for groups of 2. So here's a group of 2 that will come out as just a 2. And here's a group of 2 that will come out as just a 3. And what's left underneath here is a 3. So that stays underneath there. So the things that are outside we multiply together. And that gives us 6 square root of 3. It's easier to break things down when the numbers are smaller before we start multiplying things together, and that's where we want to end up anyway, so it's better to do it from the beginning. Well, here we have another fraction underneath the square root, and we talked earlier about how this just means we need to find the square root of 14 and the square root of 25 separately. So let's look at the 14. The 14 we can divide by 2 and we get 7. So this is square root of 2 times 7. And 25 is 5 times 5. So now if we look on the top, there's no pairs of numbers. There's no groups of numbers, so we can't do anything with that. We just have to multiply the 2 times the 7 and get back to the 14. But on the bottom, there's a pair of 5's, so that'll come out as a 5. So we end up with a 5 on the bottom. Now the 14 is still underneath the square root because both the 2 and the 7 were stuck underneath that square root. But the 5 is not because it had a pair of 5's. So you have to be really careful that you show what's underneath the square root and what is not underneath the square root. So let's look at one more example with a fraction. You can see that there's already a separate root, radical, or cube root on the top and on the bottom. But on the bottom, there's this x to the negative 1. It's a negative exponent, so we need to deal with that. So let's go ahead. We'll start on the top first, and let's break apart that 81. It can be divided by 3, which gives us 27. And then 27 can be divided by 3, which gives us 9. And 9 can be divided by 3, which gives us 3. So on the top, we have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times x times x. On the bottom, I want to break that cube root apart. We have a cube root of 3 and a cube root of x to the negative 1. I can do that because they're both underneath the cube root in its multiplication, and this is still multiplication. Now I'm doing that because this x to the negative 1, remember negative exponent means I need to move it to the other part of the fraction. This is on the bottom with a negative exponent, so I need to move it to the top with a neg um, to make the exponent positive. So if I do that, that would give me on the top, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times x times x. And then it would also put times this cube root of x, and it's now to the positive 1. On the bottom, it would leave a cube root of 3. Now, on the top, because they're all inside our cube roots, we can put them together. So on the top, this would really be like having the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times x times x times x. On the bottom, we just have the cube root of 3. So now let's look for groups of 3. Here's a group of 3, and here's a group of 3. So that 3 will come out in front and the x will come out in front, 
and that leaves a cube root of 3 inside and a cube root of 3 on the bottom. Now because that is exactly the same on the top and the bottom, they cancel each other out and we're just left with 3x.